Hi everyone, today our group is going to present on the endemic species of the Bahamas Islands. So let's start by looking more into the introduction of this island. The Bahamas is located on the northwestern edge of the West Indies, and it consists of about 700 islands. The largest island present in the Bahamas is the Andros Island. Now we're going to talk a little more about the geography and landscape. The Bahamas Islands were formed by coral reefs, and over time, as the corals became dry lands, these settlements settled and formed a big mass of land. And this happened because the sea levels declined very dramatically. The islands are predominantly flat, and they have a few sandy beaches. There are no rivers in the Bahamas, but they have many large lakes. The waters that surround the Bahamas Islands are also very clear and around 5% of the world's corals can also be found in the waters of the Bahamas. The world's third longest coral barrier reef is also located here. The first one is actually located in Australia, and the second one is the Belize Barrier Reef Reserve, and third one is at the Bahamas, as I've mentioned previously. The Bahamas banks are formed as a result of the submerged carbonate platforms. This makes limestone a key element in this region. These limestone banks may have existed since the Jurassic period. Now let's look a little more closely at the climate. The average temperature in the Bahamas Islands can range from 21 degree to 27 degrees Celsius. The temperature very rarely goes below 16 degrees or very rarely rises above 32 degrees Celsius. The prevailing wind from the northeast in the winter season and the wind from the southeast in the summer will create a generally humid environment over here. Now let's look at the three species that we have selected for this presentation. So our key species for this presentation is the Bahama Oriel. It is the black and yellow bird, as you can see in this picture. The other two species that we are briefly going to talk about is the Allen Case Rock Iguana and the Bahaman Hutia. So now let's talk a little more about the Iguana. This picture shows the Allen Kay's rock iguana. It is scientifically known as the Cyclura cyclura in Ornata. Want to know more about this reptile? Let's look at some basic information. Well, as you can see, this reptile is critically endangered subspecies that originated from the species Northern Bahamian rock iguana. The map on the right shows how this happened. Before the 1990s, the iguanas were only there on UK and the Leaf Cay. However, after the 1990s, the iguana started to spread to the Allen Cay and the other Cays. This led to the origin of the other two subspecies and the Allen Cay iguana, which is endemic to the Allen Cay of the northern Exuma Island chain in the Bahamas. Since there are other subspecies, how can we identify the Allen Cay's iguana? Let's look at the key features. So, firstly, they have a dorsal crest, head, and legs, which are usually yellowish green or orange in color whereas their body, tail, and feet are typically gray or black in color. These iguanas grow to a length of 1.5 meters, and after they mature, the yellow color will change to bright reddish-orange color. Let's look at the next picture. Usually, you see these reptiles in areas of sea levels to 10 meters high, and mostly during the daytime, as they are diurnal, which means that they are active during the daytime. However, during the nighttime, they may rest in places which are rich in limestone. A fun fact, they are sexually dimorphic animals. In this case, the males are larger and also have larger femoral pores than females, and these pores release pheromones. So now let's look into our next species. This is the Ingraham's hutia, or the Bahamian hutia. It is scientifically known as the Geocapromyce ingrahami. Want to know more about this reptile? The Bahamian hutia or, and the Jamaican hutia are the only two surviving species of the Geocapromyce genus. All the others are extinct. This species has a small but steady population, which is why it is vulnerable but not critically endangered. Their main threats involve hurricanes and feral cats bought by humans. Initially, they were thought to be extinct until 1966 when a biologist found a small population on the East Plana Cay, as you can see by the arrows. Now let's look at why this is different from other rodents. The Bahamian Hutia has very similar features to a rat. They have fur colors that range from brown, red, orange to black, gray, and white. 
and it can range in sizes between 20 to 60 centimeters. However, unlike rats, the hutia has a very short tail. Let's look at some of their behaviors. The Bahamian hutia are also nocturnal animals, which means that they will stay awake at night but rest underground during the day. Their feeding behaviors involve eating seaweed, small lizards like the curly-tailed lizard, and insects. However, they can also climb trees to feed off of fruit, leaf, bark, nuts, and shoot. We are now going to move on to the third and main species. Okay, so now let's talk about the Bahama Oriole. These birds are currently only found in the Andros Islands, and they are a species of the songbird, which makes them belong in the order of Heseriform. Previously, they were categorized as another species because they closely resembled birds from the Dominicinus species. However, in the year 2010, they were classified into their own species group. The data collected from the year 2012 reveals that there are around 190 to 254 individuals remaining. The population has been experiencing a decline since the early 1990s. They are currently classified as critically endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, which means that they are facing a very high extinction rate. Andros Island, as you can see in this picture, is divided up into five kilometer wide landmass, which is subdivided into three main human occupied caves the North Andros, the Mangrove Cay, and the South Andros, and many small un uninhabited caves. These are also the ones which are very significant to human development. These islands are actually separated within a range of 1 to 1.5 kilometers which also contributes to creating geographical isolation, thus restricting the exchange of genetic material with other organisms of the same species. Now further, we are going to talk about how these geographical restrictions can cause a problem. But before that, let's look at the key features and the evolution of this bird. So these birds, they primarily live at sea level and they make their nest in palm trees. They also like to make their nest around residential areas. The male birds will actually have a black back. So as you can see in this picture, the male bird's back is completely black. Whereas for the female, she will have some yellow patches on her back. And this key feature can be used to distinguish between these two sexes of the same species. The juvenile birds, on the other hand, will have an olive greenish coloration above their yellow chest. They look very similar, actually, the male and female but the color can be used as a good key to distinguish one another. They're also sexually dimorphic and they're more dimorphic in the Caribbean in comparison to the tropical orioles. These birds are also about 20 to 20, 22 centimeters long. So how did these birds actually evolve? Where did they come from? So as you can see in the picture right here, the formation of the land bridge across the North American and the South American continent allowed the Caribbean plate to merge. And because the Caribbean plate merged right, right there, forming a bridge, it allowed species from South America to migrate to the Caribbean plate and beyond. And it is believed that these orioles may have originated from Central America and might have migrated to the Bahamas later on. Now, a lot of fossil records have been found from the Pliocene era, and they have stated that these birds were also present in South America and Fossil records also indicate that there is a migration pattern that follows from South America to the Caribbean plate. So now as we've learned about their evolution, we're going to see how they behave. So orioles are usually socially monogamous. They're also known to have a duet with their partners. And this may help attract mate and also defend their territory. This duet behavior may also be a result of sexual conflict over mating. And this duet is actually present pre-incubation period. And when they're doing this duet, they're actually around 15 meters apart from their partners. Their nesting period begins during the month of May and they end it by the month of June. The birds usually deliver around three pale blue eggs, as you can see in this picture, but they can also lay more eggs as well. Once the young ones have hatched, the parents do show parental care. They do take care of their offsprings. They also help bring them food and take care of them until these birds are able to be completely dependent on themselves. These birds also like to travel in pairs and they feed on fruits and they like to feed on the nectar of larger plants. 
These birds are also known as songbirds, so they are known for their singing as well. Their songs can last for 2.4 seconds or even more. Their main forms of vocalization includes songs, whistles, chits, and also whines. But what makes these birds endemic? From previous data, we know that there are less than 300 individuals remaining, and they're most likely to go extinct within the next few years. The Bahama Oriel is considered endemic because of these three particular factors. Firstly, it's the lethal yellowing disease. The second is anthropogenic encroachment, and the third is brooding parasitism. So I'm just going to briefly talk about all three of these. So the lethal yellowing disease is the discoloration in the palm trees, as you can see here. And palm trees are the favorite nesting habitat of these birds. And because of the disease spreading over time, there's a decline in the number of Bahama Orioles in the population. Next is the anthropogenic encroachment. Because these habitats are being cut down because of agricultural developments, there is an increased habitat loss. So they're not able to make their nest anymore. And this is also one of the factors causing a decline. But what I want to really focus on for today's presentation is the brood par parasitism. So what happens in this case is that in this picture, you can see a blue bird. This blue bird is actually called shiny cow bird. And this cow bird is a recent introduction to this Andrews Island. And as I mentioned, this island is divided into three main sections, the north, mangrove and south. Now, what this bird does is it goes and lays its eggs in the nest of the Bahama Oriel. This bird generally will not exhibit any form of parental care. So once it goes and lays its eggs, the Bahama Oriel will also take care of its eggs. So the Oriel is not able to nurture its own child in comparison to the other one. So there's a competition for nest, there's competition for food, and there's also competition for parental care. And because of this particular species, there's also a decline because parents are not able to aid the offsprings as well as they would do previously. And because of the geographical isolation, it becomes an obvious factor that these species of birds are not able to migrate any further. They're just captivated in these particular caves. In the Andros Islands, we can see here that the ocean creates a very obvious barrier to dispersal and many island populations may have to evolve in isolation or they gradually acquire unique traits. But this long-term process can also result in endemism and that's the main focus of this presentation. The formation of new species or subspecies that occurs on a single island or in-group island can cause a destruction to the survival of the species. Now, unfortunately, because of the limited geographical distribution and constrained dispersal, many endemic forms are highly vulnerable to habitat loss and invasive species. And here we have both. We have habitat loss because of anthropogenic encroachment, and we have invasive species, which is this shiny cowbird. So I'm now going to conclude our presentation by talking about three main key points. And let's look at the first one. What did we learn from this presentation? So we learned the causes that is contributing to the extinction of these Bahama Orioles. We have the ability to prevent extinction in declining populations. And often it depends on effective management of habitats that are distributed through wildfire logging, agriculture and development. If we are able to control these particular factors, then maybe in the future, we can help save these species from extinction. The purpose of this assignment is just to reflect back on the human activity and the destruction that is caused by our natural behavior towards habitat loss and conservation of, conservation of our environment. So I really hope that you got to learn more about the Bahama Islands and also got to learn about how endemic species are becoming vulnerable over time. Thank you for listening to us and I hope you enjoyed our presentation. Here are our references for today's presentation. Thank you.